so uh, the next talk of this session is uh, practical post-quantum signature schemes from isomorphism problems of trilinear forms. Uh, and the talk will be given uh, remotely by uh, Gang Tang, and I will uh, allow him to introduce his co-authors. So Gang Tang, please go ahead. Okay. Um, thank you for the introduction. So this is the joint work with Dang Huang Dong, Antoine Jokes, and Thomas Planta, Yu Ming Chao, and uh, Winnie Sosino. So I'm going to talk about practical post-quantum signature scheme from isomorphism problems of trilinear forms. Okay. So first, uh, let me give some preliminary uh, of uh, isomorphism problems and uh, GMW plus FS framework. Um, so the classical graph isomorphism problem uh, ask <clears throat> whether two graphs are the same map to relabeling the vertices. So look at these two graphs. <clears throat> we uh given two graphs g and h consist of a uh, vertex set and edge set where vertex set n just denotes a set from one to n and so we say that these two graphs g and h are isomorphic uh if and only if we have a random permutation belongs to sn uh, mapped to n to n such that we have sigma take this uh H set F, H uh, set E is equal to F. So this formula just means that for any H consists of I, J belongs to E, if and only if we have uh, sigma I, sigma J belong to F. Okay, so <clears throat> there's some preliminary about tensors. So tensors are multi-way arrays. You can image if we have dimension two, the matrices are two-way arrays. So in this talk, we just focus on three-way arrays or we so-called three tensors. Uh, specifically, uh, we define three tensors is equal to AIJK uh, for each one. AIJK just denotes the entry belongs to the field F and the IJK uh, for the index IJK belongs to N. So what's the tensor isomorphism problem? So uh, like graph isomorphism, we also have an input for these two tensors A and B uh, is the size of M cross N cross N. The question is to find a invertible matrices LRT such that we have L act on this direction the first direction and uh, the invertible matrix R act on the second direction and uh, the last one act on the third direction. So follow from this, uh, this three direction action. So we get another tensor B. Uh, so it is tensor isomorphism problem. Okay, so um, from this isomorphism problem, we can design a digital signature based on these problems. And uh, <clears throat> it is studied in multivariate cryptography and uh, isogenic cryptography. And the construction is clear. We have two steps here. The first one, we just construct a identification scheme based on Goldratch, Nicoli, Whitson, zero knowledge protocol for graph isomorphism. And then um, we just use fiat shamia transformation to turn this identification scheme to a second digital signature. Okay, so let's look at uh, step one, how to construct an identification scheme, a zero knowledge uh, interactive protocol for graph isomorphism uh, just include two players uh, we call prover and verifier and they are given two graphs g and h 
if G and H are isomorphic, the only prover loads and isomorphism, and the goals for the prover, she will demonstrate that she loads the isomorphism without revealing it to verify. And the, the goals for verify, in, to <clears throat> guarantee uh, it, it must uh, satisfy these two properties, we call companies and the companies. Companies, it, it is if G and H are isomorphic and the prover loads the isomorphism, he always accepts. And the sound is that uh, if G and H are not isomorphic or prover does not load the isomorphism, he rejects with non negligible probability. Okay, so um, let's look at what's the GMW0 knowledge protocol for graph isomorphism. First, uh, given two graphs, G and H as our public key, and let sigma be an isomorphism as secret key, such that sigma sends G to H, so that we have sigma of G is equal to H. And then Alice generates a random permutation pi, which sends G to K. So we have the below interactive process, Alice first sends K to Bob and Bob a random sample a B from zero one and return to Alice. When Alice receives B, uh, if B is equal to zero, Alice just sends R is equal to pi to Bob. Otherwise sends R is equal to pi times sigma inverse. And when Bob receives the response R, Bob will check if B is equal to zero, Bob checks whether R of G is equal to K, otherwise just checks R of H is equal to K. Okay, so that's the construction of uh, GMW protocol uh, as our identification scheme. Then we just apply field Shamir transformation to get a digital signature. Uh, Fiat Shamir proposed a method that's taken an identification scheme and turns it to a digital signature. The key idea is use a hash function to simulate the interaction process. Uh, the, the identification scheme based on isomorphism problem fits this method. Also, <clears throat> the Fiat Shamir transformation, the security of Fiat Shamir transformation just proved in the random oracle model and uh, very recently is also proved in the quantum random oracle model. So more generally, an isomorphism testing problem asks whether two uh, combinatorial or algebraic objects are essentially the same. Besides graphs, isomorphism testing problem for groups, algebras, lattices, and the linear codes has a have also been studied. But uh, graph ISO is not good because graph ISO is low and very easy problem, both in theory uh, and in practice. So naturally we have a question, can we rescue this framework, the GMW plus Fiat Shamir to other isomorphism problems? Uh, in 1996, Pattering suggested to replace graph isomorphism with polynomial isomorphism. In particular, he suggested the digital signature scheme as we described. So polynomial isomorphism is a family of problems. So it just depends on the polynomial degrees, the number of polynomials, and so on. So some from, from this family, such as isomorphism of quadratic or polynomials with one secret, uh, is so-called IP1S turns out to be easy. And also it gives uh, rise to a series of works in multivariate cryptography. Also uh, in isogeny based cryptography, Kuvinis first proposed the use of class group actions on elliptic curves in cryptography. He adapted the GMW identification protocol to this action 
and uh, Stoneberg suggested to apply the fit Shamir transformation to this identification problem uh, protocol to get a signature scheme. However, the use of ordinary elliptic curves has issues, including the sub-exponential time quantum algorithm and uh, slow performance. So this leads to some serious works like, so the attention then turns turn to super singular elliptic curves, uh, is so-called site or say site. This leads to some, also leads to some progress on signature scheme re recently. Okay, so let's look at the tensor isomorphism in the post quantum cryptography. Um, in post quantum cryptography, we wish to devise uh, cryptographic protocols that are hopeful to resist attacks by quantum computer. Uh, this requires to utilize limitations of quantum algorithm. An a later development of Shor's algorithm for integer factorization and the discrete log is the hidden subgroup program framework. So one key reason for utilizing lattice problem in post-quantum cryptography lies in the connection with the dihedral hidden subgroup uh, program. So the best uh, algorithm for uh, dihedral hidden subgroup group program is just a sub exponential uh, proposed by Cooperberg. So similarly, a key reason for utilizing uh, tensor isomorphism nice in the connection with the hidden subgroup problem for general linear groups. So for which there exists strong negative evidence for the current techniques to work. And also there's some consequence of the strong list uh, such insights we have about limits of quantum algorithms. Okay, so here's some comparison of the best algorithm for graph ISO and tensor ISO. So the, for the graph ISO, we have a brute force algorithm running in time n factorial times a poly n. In worst case, um, we have a quasi polynomial time proposed by Babai. And in average case, uh, it will be solved in linear time. And in practice, uh, if we choose n is more than, it's, it's larger than 10 to the six, is, uh, it is very easy to solve. However, if we focus on the tensor isomorphism, in brute force, we just running in time q to the n square and times uh, poly of n log, n log q. In worst case, <clears throat> we have algorithm running in time of q to the one half times n square plus a constant. In average case, we have a q to the on algorithm. Uh, also in practice, if we choose n is equal to 10, q is 11. So the evidence uh, shows us it's hard to solve. Okay, so here's some criteria for constructing a secure protocol. So first one is practical complexity and the theoretical complexity and the well study. So the tensor isomorphism just satisfy all the above based on current evidence. So G and Chow and Song Yang in TCC lighting, it uh, they propose to use tensor isomorphism as the security basis for the GMW plus FS framework, uh, just based on advances on complexity and algorithms. In the complexity side, Bocha and Chow propose a complexity class, so-called tensor isomorphism. In the algorithm set based on many works in multivariate cryptography and some of another works. Okay, so later we will have a question can we make GMW plus FS plus tensor as more practical? So, as I described uh, above, Guo, Chou, and Chao define a new complexity class TI complete 
consisting of equivalent that are polynomial time equivalent to tensor isomorphism. Like we have GI complete, uh, just consists of problem that are polynomial time equivalent to graph isomorphism. Okay, so let's introduce a new concept we called alternating trilinear form. So first we let GLNFQ be the general linear group consisting of N by N uh, invertible matrices of FQ. And the phase is said to be trilinear if it's uh, linear in all the three arguments. We say that a trilinear form phase from FQ to then cross FQ to then cross FQ to then to FQ is alternating. If whenever two arguments of phi are equal and phi will evaluate to zero, a lateral group action of uh, A belongs to GLNFQ on the alternating trilinear form. Phi just sends phi UVW to phi act on A and uh, it just means A, a transpose act on uh, each argument. So let's give a definition of uh, alternating trilinear form equivalence, like tensor isomorphism, uh, given two alternating trilinear form phi and psi, whether there exists a invertible matrix A such that we have A just sends uh, psi to phi. So, and computes one such A if it exists. And also we have a theorem. Uh, it just says alternating trilinear form equivalence problem is in TI complete. Uh, specifically, that is ATFE and TI are polytime uh, equivalence. So here's some motivations from cryptography. Um, because of if, uh, if we want to implement uh, this scheme, we will generate uh, the tensor will generate the alternating trilinear form. But if we generate a tensor, it will cost n q. But for the alternating trilinear form, we just uh, cost n to three. For example, if we choose n is equal to line, n cube is uh, equal to 729, but n to three is just 84. So this is a big saving in practice. And also we have a practical algorithm for ATFE uh, is running in time Q to the two, uh, two third N uh, times polynomial of N log Q. So also we just, we also analyze some attack based on global basis. So we have ex uh, experimental results on Maple and Magma. And it shows that if we choose N is smaller than six, it will be very fast and the n is equal to six and the q is five. Uh, it will run in about uh, 700 seconds and uh, n is equal to seven. It cannot achieve. Also, we give a improved experimental results. We just add some, add more equations and guess some entries. Um, so this, uh, these equations will be redundant for us, but it uh, seems helpful for going the basis. And uh, this result shows uh, if n is more than eight, it will be very fast. And uh, it will permit breaking n is equal to 10, but n is equal to nine, it uh, also cannot achieve. So it is reasonable to choose n is larger or equal to nine. Okay, so that's some parameter choice of our scheme and lambda denotes the security parameter, R denotes the number of wrong and the two to the say just denotes the number of alternating trilinear form generated in each round. And we have some estimations about like R times C uh, is larger than or equal to lambda. And we also have the formula of our public key size, private key size and signature size. And with this, estimations and based on the global basis attack, but we can choose the reasonable R and C to balance our uh, parameters, like uh, public key and private key and signature key. 
T size. Also, we have a implementation for our scheme. And uh, when we, we have four concrete schemes, one, two, three, four, and we choose the reasonable parameter QNRC. Uh, and uh, we calculate the public key, private key, and the signature size. Also, for the implementation, we have the running time of key generation, sign, and verify. Uh, sorry. Okay, let's give a summary. On next uh, graph ISO, ATFE seems to be a much harder problem both in theory and in practice. And the hardness of alternating trilinear form equivalence can be explored to devise cryptographic protocols, essentially in light of post quantum cryptography. And we propose a practical signature scheme based on this problem. And we also analyze attacks on the global basis. And finally, we choose the reasonable parameters well carefully to balance and implement this scheme. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any questions? If so, please uh, go to the mic. Yes. So there's a question incoming. Hi, uh, thank you for a great talk. Uh, so I was wondering, uh, what's the motivation to go to dimension three? Uh, what does this have that dimension two doesn't have? And what about dimension four? Is that then even better? Uh, so which one dimension you mean for alternating training form? Uh, yeah. So the motivation from the practice here, motivation, because if we use the tensor isomorphism, it will cost, uh, it will be uh, expensive because if we store a tensor, it will cost n cube, but if we just uh, store a alternating training form, it will be n choose three. So I, uh, I guess I was, uh, maybe I'm a little bit confused, but uh, if we go all the way back to the beginning, we're talking about uh, matrices of dimension three or tensor products of dimension three. Where normally, like, I'm used to matrices of dimension two, where you can only multiply on both on two sides, and you're using matrices of dimension three. And I was just curious about, um, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? And I was wondering, like, what's what's the motivation to go to dimension three uh, in oh, this sense of dimension the, three? What's the motivation go dimension three? Yeah, Be because uh, if you if you just focus on these two dimension, it will be easy. Because if you uh, just uh, make this uh, the second di dimension for another side, it will be to solve a linear polynomial. The, the, prob the problem will be to solve uh, equations of linear equations. Ah, okay, thank you. Okay, there is still time for another question. Uh, so I have a quick question. So your four schemes, uh, parameter sets do they uh, have they been uh, set to to match the uh, AES or sorry the NIST uh, post quantum levels? Yeah, it's uh, this parameter just uh, matched the uh, parameter uh, security parameter for one hundred twenty eight. Okay, thank you. If there's no other questions. Let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.